That brings us to the panel discussion. Dynamic businesses and talented individuals have a choice, a choice of where to work and live. Thus, the fourth priority in our all-in plan is an appealing community, appealing especially for the next generation, such as the young professionals you met in our opening video. One important aspect of an appealing community is an even more vibrant downtown connected to our waterfronts. Downtown is a neighborhood, but it means so much more to our region. It's our region's living room, where residents from all directions gather, as we have here this afternoon. It's also our region's front door. It's where visitors form impressions of Greater Cleveland as a place to live, work, play, and do business. Today's panel focuses on the major projects underway that are going to transform downtown and the all-in approach bringing them to fruition. Let's cue a video. We're one step closer to having a developed lakefront. That includes extending a land bridge that will go from Mall C, which sits next to City Hall, all the way to connect the waterfront area around First Energy Stadium. There are big plans to revitalize the Cuyahoga River waterfront over the coming years. The plan is called Vision for the Valley. It's a 25 to 30 year master plan to revitalize and essentially expand downtown to include the river's edges as a place for people to enjoy. Sherwin Williams is staying put. Mm -hmm. The paint giant will build a new 1 million square foot global headquarters downtown. Sherwin Williams begins the next chapter of Public Square, the next chapter in the city's history. Please join us in welcoming GCP members and partners. Kofi Bonner, Chief Executive Officer for Bedrock. John Marikas, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer for the Sherwin-Williams Company. David Jenkins, Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer for the Cleveland Browns and Haslam Sports Group. And Debbie Berry, Senior Vice President, Major Projects and Real Estate Development for the Greater Cleveland Partnership. And our moderator for this evening, Jeff Epstein, Chief of Integrated Development for the City of Cleveland. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, everyone. It's great to be here. Great to be with the panel. It's really, it's really an honor and a privilege to be in front of you all today with so many partners and friends in the room to talk about one of my favorite topics, uh, downtown and waterfront development. And our, our topic here is around transforming downtown and our waterfronts. And the projects we're going to talk about are really transformative from, from Sherwin-Williams, which will transform our skyline, fill out public squares, something we've been talking about for, for a long, long time, uh, to the, the lakefront and the riverfront really creating incredible access and, and to our differentiator, our, our, our water. Uh, so thrilled to be talking about that. And, and as I think about transforming, we've done this before. Uh, and, and a lot of people sometimes are skeptical about, about the ability to, to, to achieve and pull off some of these big projects. But if you think back uh, five or six t years to the near west side, uh, the, the long-term efforts to take the shoreway down uh, to a boulevard, Metro Parks taking over Edgewater, opening up the Beach House, that was 2016, 2015. And you look over there today, millions, hundreds of millions of dollars in investment condos, apartments, restaurants, vibrancy, uh, and that was all because of collaboration, because of vision, uh, because of, of all-in, the type of all-in that Beiju talked about. So excited to dig into this uh, with the panel a little bit today. So I, I want to start with John. Uh, John, you, your company had a, had a choice to make about its future. Uh, you've been downtown. Uh, you chose to double down downtown. Uh, tell us about why, why downtown and a, a vital downtown is so important to our city and region. Well, thank you, and thank you all for being here this evening. I, I would say, you know, your first point is a very important point. Uh, we did have a choice, and it was a difficult choice. And I would tell you, there were many nights I laid in bed, you know, looking at the ceiling, everyone in Cleveland's going to hate me if we leave. And, <laughs> and there were times where we thought we were leaving. I mean, it was, it was really a challenging time for us as an organization because our we often said our hearts are in Cleveland, but we have to think with our heads. We have a public company that we're responsible for. Uh, but we worked hard. We worked hard with Cleveland and, and, and everyone from the governor all the way down, GCP, local um, officials here, county. And we really tried to make it work because we knew 
what would happen if we left, left Cleveland wasn't going to be good for Cleveland. And I would tell you that a vibrant downtown is an important part. You know, if you think about how many times just this evening we heard the comments or, or words, uh, recruit and retain talent. Uh, that was a, a big issue for us. And as we were um, recruited, if you will, in other states and other areas, uh, people were very forthright with, you know, almost plug and play programs to say, you know, you can come here, we'll take care of all of this. Here's where we can put you in and, and it's gonna be beautiful. And, you know, suddenly you felt like the prettiest girl at the dance, you know, it was this, uh, <laughs> but our team did a wonderful job, many of whom are here today. I'm very proud to be on their team. And, and, uh, and what we really worked with in Cleveland, I think was the mindset that, that we'd like to make this work. The vibrant part of Cleveland is an important part because it's, it's a catalyst. It's a catalyst for the community. It's, it's not just Cleveland, it's the surrounding community. And when you think about the ability to recruit and retain talent, you have to have a vibrant area where people want to bring their family, where they want to raise a family, and where they want to be a, co a contributing part of the, of the uh, neighborhood and, and the community. And, and, and we think Cleveland is that, and we want to be a part of that. We want to be a leader in that. We've often said that Cleveland is important to Sherwin-Williams, and we want Sherwin-Williams to be important to Cleveland. Absolutely, and you will be for another generation with that beautiful yeah. building on Public Square. We're excited. Uh, I'm going to go to Kofi. Uh, Kofi, you, you've, through Bedrock, developed this playbook in Detroit on, on how, to, how to kind of create incredibly dynamic spaces downtown. Talk to us a little bit about, about your vision for, for the riverfront uh, and where you hope to take that development. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Jeff, and thank you, fellow panelists, and thank you all, and it's a privilege being here. Let me just take a moment uh, to thank uh, you, Jeff, for all the leadership and great work and support you've provided, because this is difficult. This isn't easy. And I also want to take the opportunity to thank uh, you know, the folks in the administration and certainly the mayor, uh, who has certainly stepped up. And I, I also, I've had the privilege of working in um, this urban development uh, field for a long time. And I note that it is indeed a privilege, but it's not always a pleasure. <laughs> and uh, I can say that uh, so far to date, it has indeed been a pleasure working uh, in this city, which as many of you or some of you may know, I had the uh, real pleasure of living in and working in many years ago. So look, we, we are actively engaged in, in, in developing the, the riverfront, but we were fortunate. We were given a fantastic playbook, the vision for the valley, which some folks in this room certainly contributed to, uh, and certainly uh, Greater Cleveland Partnership was a big leader in that. And, and look, so it was very easy to take that image of really how do you create an active and vibrant, that word again, uh, riverfront community. And it really, to us, it starts with the infrastructure. And the first thing we have to do and we're planning to do is connect that vital infrastructure from the downtown core into that riverfront. Because the riverfront is a gem, somewhat unpolished right now, certainly a gem. And our intention is to create a, a mixed-use riverfront community that is linked to the downtown core with obviously streets, but mostly plazas and public spaces, obviously a river walk promenade of sorts, and create the appropriate amenities and activities that will create and attract talent so that people will want to work downtown. So as John is recruiting talent and they're looking for options for where they may want to live, it is fairly straightforward and easy, a great choice to live in downtown uh, uh, Cleveland. And, and, I, and I will say that we're also blessed with the fact that we also own this wonderful monument that's called Tower City. And in the process of really reimagining how that can fit into that down, uh, the riverfront community, we've we're beginning to really think through those connections because we also believe that it's important to bring first-class amenities uh, into this riverfront community. Uh, about four months ago, we had the privilege of enticing uh, Sir David Ajay to take a look at this uh, fabulous riverfront community. And uh, I hear that he's doing a fantastic job. I think I get to begin to see some of these images in a few weeks. Um, my hope is we can afford it. I know it'll be, there'll be fabulous images, but we'll spend some time working with him to ensure that not only is his 
image held true, but ultimately the economics work too. So, no, we're really excited. Bedrock's really excited. I know uh, Dan and Jane Gilbert are really excited by what we're doing here. And, and certainly, again, it's important to know that we have a great partner, both in the city and GCP. Thanks, Kofi. We're, we're thrilled to be a partner with you. And, and so much of what you said resonates in terms of the amount of, of planning work that takes to get to this point, the amount of, of collaboration across sectors. Uh, and, and open-mindedness to, to get to, to, get to uh, something that could really be transformative that we can look back for generation. Another, another piece of what you said was infrastructure. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn now to David uh, as we go and turn, our, turn to the, from the river to the lakefront where, where we're looking uh, collect, collectively at, at uh, massive infrastructure investments to better connect our lakefront. Uh, and so I want you to talk a little bit about that project, but, but I, I feel like I can't turn the mic over to you uh, without, without asking about the stadium. Uh, there's been in, you know, intense speculation around, around your, your, uh, your, your retractable <laughs> dome stadium uh, on the lakefront, uh, and, and we'd love for you to, to talk a little bit about, about the, the stadium and, and the vision for the lakefront. All right, $4 billion stadium, publicly funded, retractable roof. <laughs> no, just kidding, I'm kidding. Okay. Done. I, I think it probably helps to set a little bit of context of how we even got to this point starting back in 2017, and then I can take on sort of the blogs and the articles that were written over the last couple of weeks. But in 2017, as just part of prudent long-term business planning, we really started to look at our facility knowing that we had 12 seasons left on the lease. So in the event we ever had to leave, you'd have to find land, you maybe have to remediate that land, you have to aggregate land, design a building, construct a building. So the timing for us was, was appropriate. We met with the mayor um, and he asked us to assemble a team to really envision what could happen on the lakefront. Um, so as we objectively looked at the lakefront, we thought, what a great piece of property. Of course, it's currently underutilized and we have some operating challenges. So it was a really great opportunity for us to reimagine what the lakefront could be. So we undertook that process with some guiding principles though. How do we create something that is equitable and inclusive for all? Because what, it's not just about what's best for downtown or even best for um, Cleveland, but it's what's best for the region, what's best for the communities and the neighborhoods. Um, how do we address some of our operational challenges? Um, and how do we work with the experts um, to build a great vision? So we worked with um, a master planning team to create the vision and the renderings that you've seen now, which part architect, part uh, urban planner, um, part feasibility study person, uh, firm, to develop a vision um, that just was hopefully enough to inspire and rally local support to develop a longer term vision. Just recently, the past month or so, we've assembled another team. Now that the community has rallied, GCP has taken a leadership role. We've transitioned leadership to the city, uh, new administration. We've taken, uh, assembled another team to really say what can this ultimately be. Again, world-class architect, world-class feasibility study firms, uh, urban planner um, to develop this long-term vision. So really much too early to, um, to say what the stadium's going to be, what the lakefront's going to be, um, but it's really important for us to solve for three key components. Kofi mentioned infrastructure. Um, and that's gonna include potentially what the fate of Route 2, uh, a land bridge, all of the road and infrastructure around the facilities, um, which then we think will enable private development on the lakefront. Um, and then lastly, another guiding principle, although it's a very obvious part of the project, is what's gonna be the fate of our stadium. And we thought very strongly early on that leading with a renovation was the wrong dialogue to have because it was something much greater than a renovation. It was really about the, the long, what's best for the community. So that's where our work now comes into play, assembling our team to really uphold our end of that, those three project components. What's the future fate of the building? 
it's going to, we've got to let the process inform that decision. And that's working with our team to, to develop. First of all, it's studying what does the community want? Uh, what can the community support from a product perspective within the building? Then how do you include those components in a stadium redesign? Um, and then it's having true dialogue with the community to, to see if this is what they want. Thanks for that, and I, I appreciate the partnership that, that the city's had with the, with the Browns on, on the vision to envision the future lakefront and the stadium as part of that lakefront is a connected, vibrant lakefront. Uh, and we've been uh, working with, with you, with GCP, with others to study that land bridge. And I'm gonna turn it over to Debbie to talk a little bit about, about the, the, the efforts to evaluate how to connect, how to build around the lakefront and, and how to think about connecting all these projects together because if you think about the core of our downtown, the river, the lake, public square, uh, these are all pieces that need to be connected to, to, to have a truly vibrant future downtown. Yeah, thank you, Jeff, I appreciate it. And thank you to all of you for being here this afternoon to spend some time with us to talk about one of my passions, which is uh, lakefront and downtown development. Um, so GCP, our role in all of this is working with the city of Cleveland, working with all of the partners to really be the connector and convener, to bring the community to the table so that your voice is heard, so that we're making this bold vision to connect our downtown to our lakefront in a way that will serve the entire community. We're looking at doing a land bridge. We're looking at that land bridge creating that connectivity that allows multimodal opportunities. It allows people to walk to the lakefront more safely. It allows people to bike to the lakefront more safely. And it also allows an opportunity for economic development to happen on new land that gets created. Now this does have an impact on infrastructure as we've started to talk about. We are gonna have to look at and are currently looking at the shoreway and how it'll be modified to be able to create this connection, but it's the piece that's been missing from our downtown for so long. I'm glad you mentioned the west side, Jeff, because I was a part of that process as well when we changed the State Route 2, the West Shoreway, just a little bit, but it created this great opportunity for better connectivity, for better development, for better vibrancy, and that's exactly what we need to do downtown, and really what we need to do across this entire area. Beju sometimes calls it shore to core to shore. We're looking at our lakefront, our downtown, and our riverfront, and really connecting all three of those together. So that's where I think we all need to keep focusing, is on placemaking, and on connectivity, and on access for all, as we really start to uh, make the downtown more robust. And that's what's gonna attract people. That's what's truly going to make us, again, this great region on a great lake. Uh, absolutely, and I'm struck by when we open up these spaces, how many people come from, from across the city. Uh, we, we, could, we couldn't park at Edgewater last weekend when we went, uh, which, is, which is great. So I, I wanna talk a little bit about that aspect of, of equity, David, that you raised uh, and, and equitable development. And how do we ensure that, that these huge mega projects that are in the tens of hundreds of millions of dollars uh, benefit everyone in the city? Uh, and, and Kofi, I know you've had a lot of experience working with it. I want to share some of the examples from, from Detroit that, that you've incorporated into your projects that may be a model for what you're looking to do in Cleveland. Sure, I'll be happy to. You know, the, the equity is so important in everything we do, not only certainly in the construction uh, programs, and, and often there is emphasis on the workforce development associated with the construction portion. But there should be just as much emphasis, and many of, uh, obviously companies do so, in actually the talent recruitment, et cetera, and the, uh, and the growth of talent within our companies. But I will tell you that, uh, again, that word infrastructure again, at the beginning uh, of everything we're all doing, we're all focused on taking a wonderful Midwestern city that has aged infrastructure and really sort of modernizing that infrastructure. And in that process, it requires, as I said earlier, significant public-private partnership, not only in the government and, and, and frankly administrative efforts, but actually in the financing. And so the good news about that is in that financing, it typically requires a specific amount or a certain amount of, uh, of um, the opportunities for all as part of that process. So we're very engaged in ensuring that uh, proposals uh, that we send out for uh, jobs, et cetera, really are inclusive and broad, and, and so really reach as, as far corners of, of, of the city and frankly the region. But then also we're very interested in the 
potential and uh, programming of community benefits. Again, this is a place where I think we can all work together. We can all work together because fundamentally, you're absolutely right, as we build, as uh, we operate and maintain, uh, there should be a range of community benefits that come out of our projects that clearly reach beyond, frankly, the four corners of our specific projects. And there are ways of doing that within the public-private partnerships through, and frankly, I always say public-private partnerships, but these days I'm training myself to, uh, to also add philanthropy. And philanthropy is a key part. It is the fourth and very important P in this because with philanthropy, it enables us to de-risk some of the things we typically may not do. Uh, while many of the things we're trying to do are, uh, are sort of market shaping, so John talked about sort of thinking long and hard about where should I put my building, uh, um, sometimes the economics aren't quite there. Hence again, the need for public-private partnerships. But sometimes even with the public-private partnerships, there is a need for philanthropy to help de-risk some of the things we do. And when all those partners are at the table, I think we can create really um, uh, innovative and interesting programs and projects that will indeed reach f far and wide into the community. Thanks, I wanna get uh, one more hit on this community benefit equity piece from David from you yeah. and I know we were talking last week about the work you've done in Columbus with the crew and one of you share a little bit about that and how you're thinking about that in the context of the stadium. Yeah, so very relevant. We recently built a roughly $300 million stadium in Columbus and I think the key word is intentional. We were very intentional, uh, intentional and aware about the community benefits <clears throat> element to the project. We ended up hiring a consultant just to guide us through that process over the course of the project to ensure that opportunities were properly posted or communicated, uh, that relationships and synergies were able to be created, and that the development agreement reflected benefits worthy of the community. So over the course of those, that project and those $300 million, roughly $80 million went to small and minority and female-owned businesses. We contracted, uh, to Kofi's point, um, philanthropic benefits to benefit the community. There was an element of workforce housing in our project. So if you're really deliberate and intentional, uh, I think you can achieve a great result. Yeah, and I, I think there's a tremendous amount of intentionality here uh, on behalf of the administration and thinking collectively about these projects and thinking about community benefits early. Uh, and, and Debbie and, and her team at GCP have been leading a series of working groups uh, and wanted to see if you could share a little bit more about, about how those working groups are evolving, particularly around, around equity, inclusion, and community benefit. Sure, thanks, Jeff. Yeah, part of our job as a convener, again, has been to bring people to the table to take part in this process as we look at planning our lakefront and better connecting it. And so we've organized five working groups, two of them extremely robust and starting at the very beginning of the process, and that is community benefits group and then a communications and community engagement group. And so speaking specifically to that community benefits group, we're looking at pre-development work, you know, where we are now as we start to bring on our planners, as we start to bring on our engineers, everybody who's a part of this process, there are contracts and opportunities from the very start to engage everyone in that process. Then you get to construction and then you ultimately get to a finished project and we want to make sure and are starting at the very beginning to think about how we integrate local businesses, minority businesses, women-owned businesses into the success that will be the lakefront. Not only on building the project as we've seen in the past, but again opening up storefronts, opening up businesses in some of the development that will be built there. And again, Dave said it very well, I think, being intentional from the very start about engaging people. And then on the flip side, our community engagement um, group is working to make sure that we're going out and reaching people in the neighborhoods. This is a project for Cleveland. This is a project for our region. We want to make sure that we're not just creating a place for those that have been to the waterfront, those that you know, perhaps come to the stadium, but we're creating a place that everyone wants to be and everyone feels access and find something for themselves there that they can benefit from. So it's intentional, it's thoughtful, and it's working it throughout the entire process. Thanks, Debbie. Uh, John, to go back to you, and, and you've got the project that's the furthest along here. T tell us what, what, we, you know, what, what we can expect. What, what are we going to see over the next 6, 12 months? 
uh, and, and talk to us maybe a little bit about, about some of the pieces you're most excited about, about your project. Yeah, that's, it's very exciting to talk about, but I have to admit I'm a little distracted. David just went through the four items of his infrastructure. And number four, he said, most important. I said, this is where he's going to mention a great paint job. As I kind of <laughs> went forward, and it was like, it wasn't a paint job, was it most important? So I'm, I'm, I'm going to just tell you I'm a little distracted. I'm not sure. <laughs> what can you expect? You can expect um, we should be vertical, going vertical here shortly. We now have 26 um, pylons into the ground that are eight feet wide and 236 feet deep uh, that will serve as a support for a 36-story building. We'll have three structures there, a, a welcome center that will also be a training area. Uh, so you should expect to see you know, a couple thousand or more um, people that we'll be bringing in for regular training, customers, and uh, we'll be using that front center. It'll be kind of the welcome center, and that'll be right on the square. Behind it will be a 36-story uh, high-rise that uh, we think is a, a terrific um, addition to the skyline, to your point. We'll have a third structure. It'll be a, a parking structure. And, uh, you know, we've been in Cleveland now for 156 years. Uh, we've been in our current building for nearly 90 of those years, and it's tired. It's been a wonderful building. It's served us well, but, uh, you know, we have an implied agreement that with our uh, employees that, that requires us making this good investment, and we're excited to do that. Um, we operate in 123 countries around the world, and so my competitors truly aren't people local. I'm, I'm, I have to have the talent to be able to keep co compete around the world, the very best talent. And we think having a high rise like that is going to allow us to do that. And uh, I'll be brief, I know we're running short on time, but you know, when we were going through this process, if you'll kind of rewind the clock, we're in the middle of COVID trying to decide what's mm -hmm. the future of office building? What Are we gonna be committed to this? And is it going to be a lot of people working in satellites? And uh, we made the commitment because it's important to our culture. And we believe, we are strong believers that having our team together, we help share and develop people is important. And, and we also believe that that's part of the ability to keep people here in Cleveland. Uh, additionally, as a side note, we do have a, a different structure going up in Brecksville, another 600,000 square feet, where we're collecting a lot of really talented, smart um, R&D people under one facility there that will also feed uh, we believe a, a collective footprint here. We'd love to have had those both together, preferably in Cleveland. It didn't work to be able to find a, a piece of land here that we could do that. But th we think collectively it, it's, a, it's a nice addition, we hope, to Cleveland, and it'll help us retain people here. Yeah, and I, the, the investment and the announcement on Public Square couldn't have come at a better time for the, for the city, uh, and, and we're seeing already the impacts of investment, properties, apartments happening around around yeah. Public Square and around your building, so we, we can't wait to see, uh, to see it go vertical. Yeah, in our business, we travel, we, look, we go into cities, we look for cranes, you know, there's a lot of construction. It's gonna be nice to see some of those cranes in our, in our yeah. skyline between the different projects. So we're looking forward to that. So what, one of the other things we're expecting and excited to see uh, coming forward with, with the Riverfront project is, is what, what, what is referred to as phase zero. And Kofi, you want to tell us a little about what we can expect uh, in addition to seeing the initial plans later <laughs> this summer? Sure. You know, one of the things that uh, 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 we are currently working on is trying to refresh the area around the Tower City area. You know, often you go into a master plan, you really don't have anything other than the area, the la raw land. And in this particular case, we actually have uh, going assets. I mean, certainly the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse is a pretty significant asset that we have around there. And so certainly Tower City and the Ritz. And uh, candidly, some of the uh, public uh, spaces in and around uh, those existing facilities aren't in the best condition. Let me put it that way. So we have been working with the city to think about how we could refresh, even in advance, in advance of any work on the, uh, in the uh, master plan, we actually have to take care of business today. And so later this fall, you will start seeing some work on the streets there, uh, thinking through uh, just uh, better ways of lighting and landscaping and repairing some of the paving and just cleaning up those streets uh, because we think it's important that you don't wait to, to just do everything. If you, what you can do today, you do. 
In addition, within uh, Tower City, we're really excited about how we're trying to take this wonderful sort of grand dame of a, a mall and evolve that and adapt that into something that is perhaps more relevant in today's marketplace. And so you see we're trying a few things, changing. Certainly we've been able to uh, first attract a number of really, um, uh, we think, special uh, retailers from within the greater community. And they are there, and we're trying to bring in uh, a few more events and activities, family-friendly activities. And you will see we're also beginning to transform the interior of the mall as we think about how to bring people into the downtown core. But the longer term, I think, vision for Tower City is again in the hands of uh, Sir David Ajay. And we're working really closely with him to think about how we can ultimately permanently uh, transform that structure into something that we think will be a great amenity for, frankly, the workers, uh, uh, the, the great workers that will be in Sherwin Williams and all the folks in that area and the hundreds of thousands of visitors to the great. Uh, facilities that are in the downtown core. Thanks. We're ex excited to see the, the phase zero improvements, excited to, to dig into the, to the planning. Uh, David, Debbie, what can we expect next on the lakefront? Community engagement. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're, again, really looking at getting the community to weigh in on how this lakefront should look, how it should be connected. And so we have already begun actually meeting with that next generation taking advantage of college kids being home for the summer, taking advantage and meeting with high school's kid children and programming, and bringing them down to the waterfront and asking, what is it that you want to see? I mean, they are the next generation. They are the ones that are going to really, truly benefit from everything that we're building and from having a greater downtown uh, and a better city. And so we've started those conversations and began to get that input. But over the next couple of months, you'll see a website being rolled out. You'll see us uh, calling community meetings, meeting in small groups, really digging into what does the community want to see out here and how do we make that happen so that, again, we're really tying all these projects together. Yeah, just to build upon that, you know, I think most people know that the city and the state are co-funding uh, some feasibility and traffic studies. That's buying us some time. That won't be done until midsummer next year, but it buys us the time to do the really important community outreach and input work while also allowing us time to, again, work on what the stadium could be. So for us, it's really important to have optionality. It's hard to even say what a budget for a renovation or a new building should be. Um, it's really important, though, to better understand what could you get for what and is that viable. So great. We're, we're just about out of time. I'm going to do a quick check out for everybody up here. So in a, in a couple words, share, share what the couple things you're most excited about for your project. Rapid fire, Debbie. I'm just excited to see that the lakefront is really coming together. I think we have the right alignment with the right leadership. We have funding opportunities, um, and we've got engagement. So, Connection and transformation. The combination of these three projects and the stitch from lakefront to public square to the riverfront, I think, is going to be transformative for the city. Impactful. You know, you didn't give me a chance to talk about diversity and inclusion. We we're thinking about the impact that we'll have not only during construction, but for a quite a long time, 90 years in our current building, maybe another 90 in a newer uh, facility, but, but in the community. We, we want to make a very positive impact because we know that benefits us as well. And I'm most excited as I started off with the partnership with the city and the GCP because together we will work through a lot of problems and issues that will come and it will be fantastic. Great. And I'll add on co collective impact and equitable access. So thank you so much to our panelists. Uh, appreciate it. <clears throat>
uh, from the Cleveland Browns and Haslam Sports Group. Thank you for their commitments to our city and our region and to transforming not only downtown, but through their developments, transforming our community in a much broader way.